inside the 6,000-year-old labyrinth of Malta. It's called Ipoium, which means basement in ancient Greek. This is translated from a Greek article. This Ipoium, this basement, is located in Paola, Malta. The Ipoium of Hal Saflieni is considered the oldest prehistoric underground temple in the world, 6,000 years old. It's really ancient structure dating back to 4000 BC. Experts believe that what we're considering as a sanctuary, a temple, or a necropolis, that is for burying the dead, as the remains of more than 7,000 people have been recovered by archaeologists from this area. We know that there was once an imposing temple that meant the entrance of the Hippogium. This may have once started as a natural cave which was greatly expanded using horns and other tools such as obsidian to cut the soft limestone substrate. There was an upper level, which was the earliest, probably around 4000 BC, a middle one and a lower one, which came later, and the findings indicate that it was used until 2500 BC. The cave system is a highly specialized piece of work. It's an excellent example of ancient engineering as they used a careful light direction from the surface to penetrate the lower levels. Composite red paintings covering the ceilings with spots, spirals, and honeycomb patterns. Of the many thousands of relics found inside the labyrinth, many were found to have elongated skulls. Yet another mystery that, though explained, is still poorly understood. The Poyum was discovered by accident in 1902 when workers cutting cisterns for a new housing development broke through its roof. The workers tried to hide the temple at first, but ev eventually it was found. This is according to Wikipedia I'm adding now. The study of the structure was first conducted by Manuel Magri. He directed the excavations on behalf of the museum's committee starting November 1903. And during the excavations, a portion of the contents of the Ipogium, including grave goods and human remains, were emptied out and discarded without being properly catalogued. The confound things, to confound things further, Magri died in 1907 while conducting missionary work in Tunisia, and his report on the Ipogium was lost. Excavation continued under Sir Themistocles Zamit, who attempted to salvage what he could, Zamit began publishing a series of reports in 1910, continuing excavation until 1911, depositing his findings at the National Museum of Archaeology in Valletta. And then the Ipogium was first opened to visitors in 1908, while the excavations were still ongoing. Real attempts to preserve the site start in 1991, when it closed for a decade to arrange it for visitors, and in 2011 a more intensive program was launched to monitor the decay of the site. The site. Now, the description of this area, it, it indicates that it was once a surface shrine uh, that there marked an entrance to the Apogeum. The temple structure uses a careful direction of light from surface to penetrate into the lower chambers with intricate patterns painted on portions of the ceiling with red ochre falling motifs of spots, spirals, and honeycombs. One of the main chambers, called the Holy of Holies, appears to be oriented such that the light from the winter solstice eliminates its facade from the original opening above. This is what we're seeing here now, the Holy of Holies. The resonance niche cut in a middle chamber called the Oracle Room was possibly designed to protect, to project chanting or drumming throughout the rest of the Pogium. A broad range of objects were recovered from here, including intricately decorated pottery vessels, stone and clay beads, shell buttons, amulets, axe heads, and carved figures depicting humans and animals. The most notable discovery was a sleeping lady 
The clay figure thought to represent a mother goddess. The figure ranged from abstract to realistic in style, with major themes thought to be related to veneration of the dead and spiritual transformation. Complex artistic techniques also are presented in the case of a single large pottery bowl, which utilized both naturalistic and stylized themes, with one side realistically depicting bovines, pigs, and goats, and the other representing hatched animals hidden with complex geometric patterns. The remains of some 7,000 individuals were found here, and though many of the bones were lost early in excavation, most of the skulls were deposited at the National Museum. A small percentage have an abnormal cranial elongation similar to priestly skulls from ancient Egypt, fueling speculation about the people who occupied this area and their practices and beliefs. Further excavations took place in 1990 to 93 by Anthony Pace. The hippogeum was then closed to visitors between 1991 and 2000 for restoration works and since it has reopened. Heritage Malta allows entry to only 80 people every day while the site's microclimate is strictly regulated. Scientific research on the hippogeum is ongoing and in 2014 an international team of scientists visited to study the acoustics. The Hippogeum, constructed entirely underground, hewn into soft globigerina limestone, has uh, halls and chambers and connected through the labyrinth system step with a series of steps, lintels, and doorways. The upper level is thought to have been occupied first, while the middle and lower levels expanded the excavation later. Some of the middle chambers appear to share stylistic characteristics with the contemporaneous megalithic temples found across Malta. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.